thought I'd put together a little chart to help us look at all of these neuromuscular diseases together to distinguish what's different from one from the next so you don't get too confused on how to remember all of these diseases. First we'll look at Guillain Barre. And Guillain Barre, remember, is when the antibodies attack the swan cells that makes the cells, the nerve, uh, nerves inflamed in edematous. So they're swollen and inflamed nerves from the swan cells being attacked. And it causes that ascending symmetrical paralysis. So it starts at the feet and works its way up. Like, a, like a, um, someone in the army may wear a beret cap. And that's how I was taught to remember Guillain Bray was that Bray is a hat worn in the military. So as you think about a soldier marching and they're marching with their feet, so the paralysis begins in their feet and works their way up. We need to remember that we need to have respiratory equipment available so that when that diaphragm begins to become paralyzed, it will not allow the patient to breathe anymore. So we will have to intubate the patient. We need to remember also that this disease can take up to a year to recover. As the patient recovers, the paralysis works its way from the head and back down. So that way uh, it goes from ascending paralysis and then when it goes away, it's descending. But if you remember ascending paralysis, bilaterally symmetrical, and then on the healing side, it comes all the way down. Remember that the onset can be anywhere from hours to days to full paralysis. Multiple sclerosis is a permanent disease. It affects mostly women in 20s to 30s. It is a demyelinating myelin sheath. It has brain plaques on MRI. It has intention tremors, and this is the only one that has intention tremors. Slurred scanning speech, tinnitus and vertigo, ringing in the ears, dizziness, memory loss, mood swings, impaired judgment, concentration, bowel and bladder issues, vision changes, diplopia, blurry vision, nystagmus, muscle spasticity, and remember that air conditioning helps reduce fatigue. They need to alternate rest with activity, but rest does help regenerate them, so they need more rest than activity. Myasthenia gravis has to do with the thymus gland, so don't forget thymoma, and maybe they need a thymectomy, and it's not supposed to really be enlarged when you're an adult. It is antibodies degrade the acetylcholine receptors. So this is our acetylcholine one. This is the only one that deals with acetylcholine receptors on the muscle fibers that makes muscles contract. We have ptosis, droopy eyelids, dysphagia, di diplopia, um, double vision. Uh, this one does not affect things symmetrical. Um, they have a mask-like face, so the muscles in the face aren't getting enough acetylcholine, so they have that flat affect. This one has the tinsulin test. So we give them tinsulin, their symptoms uh, automatically, like within seconds, go away. Then after about five minutes, the symptoms return. If they get too much acetylcholine or too much of that anticholinase drug, then they will have the symptoms of bradycardia, abdominal pain, and, and sweating. So they will need atropine. So always have atropine ready for the tinsulin test. Next is the medications. Peridostigamine bromide, and that is the anticholinase drug that we give the patients who have myasthenia gravis, and they need to take it every day at the same time because if they don't, it will mess up their acetylcholine levels and then they can have symptoms. So, they also want to give eye drops because it makes the eyes dry. An anticholinergic drug makes eyes dry and everything else dry too. If they're having a myasthenia crisis, their myasthenia is worse because they don't have enough of the drug. So maybe they omitted medications or maybe their body's under stress or infection. So myasthenia crisis it's when their condition, their disease is worse than they need medication. They're not getting enough medication. On the opposite is cholinergic crisis. And here's a little tip that I like to say. 
Ah, oh, you are crazy for taking so much medication. You're crazy you took too much. So C, cholinergic crisis, crazy, it goes together. We don't want them to overdose on their medication. So that's a little thing I made up to help you remember. Uh, overdose, and we want to give atropine, which is our antidote for the overdose. How do we know they have too much? Bradycardia, sweating, abdominal pain, and cramps. Those are our symptoms. Next is ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. It affects people over 40 years old mainly. It is fatal three to five years to death after onset of symptoms. It affects the motor neurons. It degrades them. It degrades the ones in the spinal cord and the brain stem. It's a progressive muscle weakness. It is not bilateral like Gullian Bray is bilateral. This one's just random. Progressive muscle weakness that leads to paralysis. Eventually the motor neurons and the spinal cord and brain neurons degrade so much that they will eventually affect the respiratory center. Hence the need for a tracheostomy soon. They have odd or inappropriate periods of laughter and crying that don't make sense. Hyperactive deep, deep tendon reflexes. Paralysis that will require a tracheostomy. We want to delay the tracheostomy and prolong their life as much as we can. So we will give Rilazole. Rilazole delays the trach. It helps uh, slow the progression of the disease. So those are the main key points for ALS. The other one I put on here is Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy is not an autoimmune disease. It is caused from a, usually a viral illness. It has inflammation of the facial nerve. And then you will see uh, half of the face is paralyzed. And I put this up here because it sounds like a stroke or ptosis, but usually everything else with the patient is fine and they're not having any other symptoms. So the diagnosis is really just based off the symptoms. So what do they do? They just give them steroids, like maybe a prednisone pack for a while, and then acyclovir for uh, HSV or uh, any other viral type illness that may have contracted that has contributed to their Bell's palsy. They will recover from this just fine.